Hi. Uh, for the third in the series, we're going to take a look at the anemone, and today we're going to focus on the math behind the sculpture. And, you know, I believe that the, the very best math problems aren't actually solved. They're like, you know, those mountains that you climb, and you get to what you think is the top, and you see behind it another higher and even more fascinating mountain. And I also can't talk about math without saying how indebted I am to my Berkeley High math teachers, San Martin, Henri, Mr. LeBlanc, and Ms. Bodenhausen. Um, and, you know, I got from them the tools that I use, you know, the, the, the ropes and ice axes um, that, I've, that I use to find my way in this terrain. And I can remember in their classes, you know, when they would get into a groove and the, the class would fall silent and you'd hear the clickety-clack of the chalk as they were, you know, writing equations down. And, they would, you know, and when it got to the, the end of the board, out would come this, you know, big eraser and big swooshes and, you know, all this hard work would disappear in a cloud of dust. And, um, you know, it's a moment of commitment because, you know, you can't, it's like, you know, you can't get back to where you were and you just are, you know, off on the next stretch, trying to get to the next view, the next resting place until the bell rings, um, the next little ledge to spend the night. I can also remember about chalkboards having to write, I will not chew hubba bubba in class a hundred times, but um, I don't think that was for a math class. Um, so chalkboards aren't really used these days anymore. Um, but nevertheless, we're going to start this math problem by um, clearing some space first. So here we go. Good. Don't want to lose this. Might not get the anemone back. Okay, so if we have a circle that's rotating and we put another circle behind it, we could say that these two circles are offset in terms of angle but we could also say they're offset in terms of time. And that's going to be the you know, more useful way to think about it. Um, and we can go all the way around until we have you know, a whole bunch of equal time offsets. And if we look at it from the side, uh, we see this you know, beautiful little wave. And you know, maybe the amplitude we could increase a bit and you know, maybe slow it down. But you know, that looks perfect. And a lot of the math that we're going to do is actually just about preserving that wave. Now, for the anemone, um, what I wanted to do was have a wave you know, go through a circle. And so if you have a bunch of points on a circle, and imagine this line is the wave, um, as it goes through, let's notice the time interval as it hits the various points. And you can see that on the left and right poles, it's a shorter time interval, and in the middle, there's more of a stretch of time. Now, if we take that time interval, and we remember that when we built that camshaft, that was, you know, the, the spokes were the time as well. What that means is we can take this time interval and wrap it up into a circle and use that spacing to make the camshaft. And if we turn that um, on its side, we see this kind of funny looking wave. But if we map that wave back down to the spacing on the circle, you see that we've preserved our original wave, which is what we want. Now we can do the same thing, you know, in the other direction, like this. And then since I know I'm gonna be wanting to add the motions together, I have to have individual grooves for every point. We have to kind of, you know, I think it's like a reflection and some shuffling and we can make it like this. And the way that we're going to add the movement together is if you imagine you have two circles and there's a bar going across them, then the midpoint of that bar, you know, it's the average of the, of the two heights. Um, and the average is the sum, so they're being added up, divided by two. So since it's being divided by two, I'm going to be looking for an excuse later to magnify um, the movement. Um, and also, because the bar is tangent to the circles, it means that the position of one wave affects where it is on the other wave, and so I have to be kind of careful with proportions uh, not to get too much distortion. So we could build it all like that, and uh, that's looking pretty good. So um, 
All right, well, let's get the anemone back. One sec. Uh, great. Okay. So if we take a look at the anemone and we start down here, um, we see that there's two electric motors and the motors are turning these helical camshafts. And if you look right here, you'll actually see this, these tick marks on the aluminum. And that is actually the spacing um, from the circle that we were looking at. And I machined those in because I was using those marks to index this block of maple when I was machining it on the, um, on the mill to, to make the helixes like this. And riding across the two helical camshafts are these blue bars. And from the side, you see this kind of funny looking wave. And the motion is getting added up right here in the middle. Then the strings are getting mapped from a line to a circle. And then the strings come up through here and they amplify their movement in these um, outstretched arms. So I think that's, that's the math behind the anemone and um, I hope you liked it. Um, thanks a lot.